Hello and welcome to the ABC Networking channel. My name is Dick van Oeveren and today I will be covering a great new release of software for the Aruba OS CX series switches. Release 10.1 with lots of new features. The Aruba OS CX software has been built from the ground up and is operating on a Linux kernel using a database for network operations, configuration, analytics and much more. Before we dive into the 10.1 features, let me give you an overview of the Aruba Campus Edge wired networking portfolio. Starting with the 2530 series, and which is an entry-level layer 2 managed access switch, up to the 5400, which is a chassis-based Campus Edge solution. For the aggregation and core layer, Aruba offers the 3810 series for smaller enterprises up to the 8400 series switches, an enterpri enterprise chassis switch with capabilities of a carrier grade switch. Now let's see what great new features Aruba has on the 8320 and 8400 series. There are three fundamental pillars on which the Aruba OS CX switches are built. It's the hardware that is based on the latest and greatest available ASICs and provides carrier class availability. And it's the software that the Aruba OS CX network operating system, uh, which is a completely new developed network operating system that allows you to fully program and monitor the switches through REST APIs. And then there is the network analytics engine that provides you with integrated insights of what's happening with the network. A great tool for troubleshooting and monitoring network operations on an Aruba OS CX switch. Now let's dive into the new features that are available in the 10.1 release. Really the most important new feature is the virtual switching extension, which I will cover later in this video. For resiliency and availability, release 10.1 now supports bidirectional forward detection for OSPF v2, static root and VRRP. And for security, release 10.1 now supports TechX accounting. Of course, this is interoperable with Aruba's ClearPass, but also third-party TechX servers are supported. And to increase the security level on the switches, Release 10.1 now allows you to disable ICMP redirects and TTL expires functions. For multicast routing, uh, PIM sparse mode that is, Release 10.1 now supports graceful restart and it is possible now to perform root leaking between VRFs and configure static ARP and MAC addresses. In addition, ten, release 10.1 allows you to create a span on a link aggregation and there is support for copper 10G base and 40 gig extended range single mode transceivers. With the introduction of release 10.1, scalability has improved significantly, as you can see in this table. One of the things worth mentioning here is that on the 8320, you can run the switch in two different modes. In mobile first mode, you can see that the MAC and ARP address tables are larger than when running in rooted mode. If the main function of the switch is to route traffic, then you'd want to set the system in rooted mode. When running the switch more or less in a layer 2 environment, you set the system in mobile first mode. There are also a lot of usability improvements. The repeat command allows you to have the switch automatically repeat a command. For example, if you want to show some interface statistics every 5 seconds, you'll see the result appearing in the CLI without the need to type in the command yourself. And whereas with release 10.0 you always had to prepend each command with the do word when in configuration mode, this is not required anymore with release 10.1. You can now run each command that is available in global mode also in the configuration mode without prepending with do. 
With release standard one, the pipe option is supported and this allows you to filter information based on the operators that you provide after the pipe. The example on this slide shows you the options. Release standard one uh, now supports some additional SNP MIPS, which are the IP forward, BGP, PVST and bridge MIP. And you can now clear the rest sessions with the HTTPS server session close all command. This comes in handy when you have no more rest sessions available. With release standard zero, you had to wait until the aging timers timed out and now you can just clear the sessions. There are also a lot of OSPF and BGP improvements. Release standard one now supports root maps. The slide shows you the available options for the root maps. With release standard one, it's now possible to reference bandwidths up to 100 gig and RFC 4222 is supported, which allows you to reliably transport adjacency and hello packets during heavy load of the device. Release standard one also fills some feature gaps for OSPF v3, which are the area range aggregation for type 3 and type 7 address ranges, virtual links including the configuration of the virtual link parameters like hello interval, dead interval, retransmit interval and transit delay, and the not so stubby areas are supported. And with release standard 1 we now support the IPsec authentication for OSPF. There are quite some new BGP features uh, available in release standard 1. There is support for 4-byte autonomous system-wide unique BGP identifiers, which is described in RFC 6286, TTL security, next hop address tracking, um, textual representation of autonomous system, which is described in RFC 5396, regular expressions for IP community lists, multiple AS path enable, which allows for multi-path load sharing, uh, root map support for 4-byte AS paths, uh, allowing uh, multiple individual community numbers, uh, enhanced root refresh capability for a BGP4, which is described in RFC 7313, and the support of autonomous system reservation for private use, which is described in RFC 6996. And then finally for the network analytics engine, release standard 1 now has some new capabilities and features. There are some great new scripts available, which are the network health script with baselining, fault finder NAE scripts and Office 365 health detection using analytic data collectors. With, uh, with automatic baselining, the system can now automatically generate thresholds for alerting based on information that comes from machine learning. This means that there is no need to configure thresholds any longer. There are analytic data collectors now in NIE that allow you to control counting entries like with ACLs and this gives you service insight whereas you can match on any value and then create a monitor in NAE. For the NAE engine there are some new functions available and it's now uh, possible to compare a ratio of rates and take action. So for example compare the DHCP relay requests and response rates and then take action. Release standard one now supports multiple graphs in NAE for related agents and more extensive routing protocol support for OSPF and BGP. Before we dive into virtual switching extension, let's have a look at what makes a good high availability solution by looking at the customer requirements and solution capabilities. For redundancy, what makes a good redundancy solution? Really, the solution has to provide hardware redundancy, preferably a hot swap, but also software redundancy by having a multiple control plane solution as opposed to a single control plane solution. 
For resiliency, customers are looking for solutions that allow link virtualization and process resiliency, which means that when a process breaks in the system, it should really be self-healing and should not impact the operation of other processes. For performance, customers are looking for solutions that scale with low latency, high speed links and rapid failover. In addition, there should be minimal performance loss when upgrading the systems. And finally, simplicity. How easy is it to configure a system? And customers really want to minimize the risk of misconfigurations. With complex designs and configurations, this might become a challenge. Now, where are we with MC lag? Uh, I think Aruba is doing a pretty good job here, but there is still room for improvement. Especially on simplicity, there is a better job to be done. And here is where virtual switching extension comes in. VSX is built for the core and aggregation, where availability is key, and the foundation of VSX is MC. Uh, is MC lag. VSX allows for high availability during upgrades uh, and operational simplicity by introducing a single management plane, distributed layer 2 and layer 3 forwarding without requirement for VRRP. It's really providing all the benefits of stacking like virtual stacking framework VSF but with better high availability because it utilizes uh, co dual control planes. Let's compare MC lag with stacking technologies like VSF or IRF. With stacking technologies you can see that there is a single control plane and the data plane is distributed which means that each switch forwards layer 2 and layer 3 traffic locally. Still the forwarding decisions are made by the control plane that sits on the master switch. With MC lag, there is no concept of a single control plane. Each switch has its own control plane and makes its own layer 2 and layer 3 forwarding decisions. This allows for much faster convergence when there is a control plane failure on one of the switches, as opposed to a switch over of control plane in the stacking environment. The challenge with MC lag is that because the switches operate as separate entities, both switches have to be configured individually as well. So this can introduce complexity and a chance of configuration failure. And now this is where VSF kicks in. With VSX, the concept of primary and secondary switch is introduced, whereas the primary switch controls what information is synchronized with the secondary switch. With release 10.1, the configuration of VLANs, ACLs and active gateways is now synchronized with the secondary switch, with the primary switch being the master. In other words, when a link aggregation is configured on both switches and on the primary switch you tell the switch to synchronize the VLANs and ACLs, and when you add the VLANs and ACLs to that link aggregation on the primary switch, this configuration is automatically synchronized on the secondary switch. You don't have to configure this anymore on the secondary switch. This means that the only thing you have to do on the secondary switch is to, com is to like create the link aggregation interfaces and assign these interfaces to the physical interfaces. Simply put, with VSX you create a single management plane whilst still operating on dual control and data planes. You get the best of both worlds. This slide shows you all the benefits that you get with VSX. From the bottom up there is no requirement anymore for a spanning tree which greatly simplifies the configuration and allows for a loop free operation. As for layer 3, in the VSX cluster you don't have to use VRRP but an active gateway which is a single command on the VLAN interface that allows you to create a virtual gateway for that given VLAN. With active gateway you allow a distributed layer 3 operations in a very easy and simple way. 
With VSX, you are operating with dual control planes that give you all the benefits of availability during software upgrades. It's distributed layer 2 and layer 3, unified management and hardware redundancy. And finally, for northbound layer 3 traffic, uh, it, this is also handled by the VSX switches individually. In other words, the VSX member that receives a layer 3 packet that was originally sent by the other VSX member will process that layer 3 packet locally. This is a feature called active forwarding. Now where does this put the Aruba OS CX release 10.1 with VSX in terms of simplicity now? I would say much better. The configuration and design is greatly simplified and as said you get the best of both worlds with a single management plane and distributed control and data plane. Now in the next video I will show you a live demonstration on how VSX works and a more in-depth explanation of the works. For now I want to close off with this slide uh, that shows you some of the resources where you can find and share information and scripts for Aruba OS CX switches. First we have the Aruba Solutions Exchange or ASC. This portal is designed for network engineers that are interested in obtaining scripts and configurations that directly integrate with the network analytics engine. The network analytics engine user interface allows you to obtain scripts from the ASC by a single click from that user interface. Second, there is GitHub. Aruba provides a lot of NIE scripts and they are posted on, uh, on a publicly available GitHub. Of course, the community can fork the scripts and make enhancements as this is one of the major functions of GitHub. And then we have Airheads. This is the community that glues everything together, NAE, ASC and GitHub. On Airheads you can find lots of, of information, articles, presentations, technical documentation that allows you to become familiar with the full Aruba portfolio. Now this concludes the introduction of the Aruba OS CX release 10.1 software. I hope you found this useful. If you did, please like the video. And if you have any comments or requests, please let us know. And be on the watch for more videos to come. Have a great day.